Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds, back again. <laughs> and I believe you're one of the few people, Bama Beach Bomb, that has made on the podcast twice now. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, it's been it's been a couple of years. It has. But you're you're saying I'm one of the few. Is this is this correct? It is correct. I think Tom Rowland was one, and uh, oh. that might be it. It might be just the two of you. I apologize if I missed. I, I, I'm in the same company as Tom Rowland. I, I I'm nervous now, Joe. Like <laughs> that's a well, big deal. You still can't out put out out push up him. That dude can yeah. I think do more push ups than anyone in the state of Florida? Yeah, I, oh. I, I got I got some work to do, man. <laughs> But you made it on the podcast twice. And one of the big reasons is I know why it's going to be heading over your way sooner than later to do a whole beach fishing mastery course. It's been one that's been asked for so many times, and we've really been waiting on the right person. And we've done a couple of things with you before. It's always worked out well. We love how you teach and how you present. We're like, man, this is just going to be a killer course. So spoiler alert we're working on a on a full-fledged like mastery course on everything you want to know about fishing the beach with bama beach bum himself and what we'll, i think it's gonna be spring right you guys are gonna do that like when the pompano will run and just have some epic footage and yeah that's that's the plan anyway you know weather is it, you you never know especially in the spring we get a lot of bad winds sometimes but springtime for us in, in our particular area on the north central gulf coast that's really the bullseye that that's when we really start to see our water temperatures get in that sweet spot, which for us, uh, we'd like to see it around 68, 70 degrees consistently. You know, once we start seeing that consistency in there, that's when we're going to really start to see those pompano in large numbers uh, because, you know, we've got residential fish, but of course we got the migratory fish that come through that time of year. Uh, we still got our whiting in there. Our, you know, we start catching some big whiting. Yeah. And you're still catching those big black drum, you know, they're, they're kind of lingering still from, from that winter season when we catch those. And then you've got your Spanish mackerel showing up, your King mackerel showing up, you got bait everywhere. You got, I mean, you get opportunities late spring, you're starting to see those trout. It's, it's just, it's just a glorious time, Joe, you know, <laughs> we, we go this, what feels like forever in, in our winter season when you yeah. can't find a dang fish anywhere, it seems like on the beach. And then you just, you hit spring and it just starts clicking. And uh, hopefully when Wyatt comes, he'll get to experience some of the beauty of what we get to experience on the North Central Gulf Coast. As George Costanza from Seinfeld would say, it's rebirth, rejuvenation, springtime, baby. <laughs> and it all starts happening. I know. Yeah, so, yeah. So We're so close, man. It's like end of February. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. And we're here at the, at the end. And I mean, heck, it, it, I know you're actually close to me. You're in Orlando right now. And um, dude, it's at like 90 degrees this week. So uh, I know I, is... I was, I was packing for this trip and you know, I've been in, I've been in like six layers of clothing last, I mean, two months where I am. And I was throwing in my shorts and my t-shirts. I was literally like dancing, packing, getting ready for this trip. I was so stoked. <laughs> it's awesome down here. Love it. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. In, in terms of traveling and, and how to catch fish on the beach. Cause that seems to be when I do a lot of my surfing, surf fishing and fishing from the beach is when I'm on vacation, don't have a boat, don't have a kayak, but I have a rod and reel. And I think that's what a lot of people want to hear is all right. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to go have to buy a nine foot surf rod. I don't have to buy all this fancy stuff. How, how do I go out there and just catch fish with the stuff I have, like, what are some of the, we'll talk about the mistakes, misconceptions, what, you know, what to avoid and talk about some overall rigs. And, and I guess let's start though, with like feeling out of beach. Cause that seems to be the number one question is I get to a beach and I have no idea where to start. It all looks the same. It's just a bunch of sand. Uh, occasionally you might be in an area with, you know, a jetty or some rocks and that's obviously some type of structure, but in general, Beaches are, you know, they're kind of long and, and, and for the average eye, it does kind of look the same. Like how, how do you go to maybe a spot you haven't fished before and, and where do you start? Like, how do you pick a couple of good spots? Yeah. The, the main thing I'm looking for anytime I go to the beach is depth. Anytime I can find a deeper area and, and that that's consistent with, with most styles of fishing, especially saltwater fishing, you know, depth is in general going to, <clears throat> gonna hold bait gonna hold fish and you can do it a couple of ways um 
you know, and there, there's a lot of technicalities to reading the surf, but, um, you know, the two best ways you can, if, if number one is with the waves, if you understand how waves work, they're going to break, uh, they're going to white cap and break over shallower water, and they're going to maintain their shape and form and not break over deeper water. So if you have a little bit of wave action that day, you can just kind of look at that, stand back, get on a high point of that beach before you approach the water, just stand back and watch. I'd say give yourself at least five minutes because, you know, of course, you know, you've got sets and how these waves are coming to the beach. You know, if you just look for a second, it's not going to always be consistent. So you want to just get a little bit of consistency and stand there for about five minutes, take a, take a beat, take a breath, yep. just watch, you know, and just see, see what you can, can tell where it seems like those waves are keeping their shape and any area that looks like it's maintaining shape closest to the beach where that water's pretty deep. That's an area you want to focus in. Uh, we don't always have waves. We don't always have the luxury of pretty waves coming in. You know, sometimes it's pretty flat, pretty calm, especially along our area uh, in the North Central Gulf Coast. And the other way is, of course, if you have polarized lenses and you've got a sunny, sunny day, hopefully, uh, you can just kind of look at the water. You're going to have to go midday at this. You know, you're not going to be able to get out there at 6 a.m. and be able to see this, but you can see color change in the water. Uh, you know, anywhere that you see the darker colors, that's going to be your deeper water, lighter colors, shallower water. So th those are the two ways that you're going to be able to read the beach is, is with waves and, and color change in water. Another real simple way, um, this is probably the easiest way. Forget all that stuff that I just said. If you can't keep up with that, if you, if you are just, you know, it's too confusing for you. If you don't have those options, uh, you can go down to the beach, walk down. And just look at the sand, stand and look down the beach, look at the sand, and you're going to see some different features just on the sand itself. Uh, you'll see points, you'll see carve outs uh, up and down that beach. A point, generally, that's going to be an area where that, that shallower water is going to run out to the bar. So you're going to have that, that point running generally out to the bar. So that's going to be shallower. And then anytime you see those little carve outs, that's like a little bowl, there's going to probably be deeper water up close to the beach. There's going to be that pocket. Uh, what that is, is where the rip, uh, the rip current, where that energy from these waves are hitting the beach, that's got to go somewhere. So that energy is going back out and it's carving out the sand. It's digging out a hole, a pocket, as it's continuing to hit the beach and then go back out into the Gulf or into the ocean. And you've got that carve out. So that's a few ways you can do it. Uh, and I would just focus anywhere you can. Now, I always tell people this too. Fish along the beach, they can be caught anywhere. doesn't mean they're not going to be in the shallower water. It's not like, oh, don't ever throw a bait there. But in general, uh, you're going to be a little bit more consistent if you can find those deeper holes for your pompano, for your whiting. But in different scenarios, they, they will be in shallower water. So there's no bad place to cast, but there are just better places to cast. And for a beach bum, you're quite knowledgeable, my friend. <laughs> All right. That, that was a long answer, hopefully. That was awesome. <laughs> so let's keep going down that path. So we found a, a, a pocket, a cutout, a deeper zone. Mm -hmm. How do we fish it? Do we just throw whatever lure or bait right in the middle of it? Do you throw around it? How do you, what's the best way, assuming they're going to be down in there, right? Waiting for sure. bait fish and shrimp or whatever to come through. How, how do we fish that area to, to maximize the amount of strikes we get? Sure. It, and before, before we dive into that, I, I do want, I want to put a disclaimer on this because, I, you know, obviously, and in, in, as an educational platform uh, for fishing, you know, we, we get real technical. And we want to be technical and we want to be successful, but let's, let's not forget. And I try, I try to, I try to present this with surf fishing. You know, there's two approaches to it. One is the technical side of things where we want to go out. We want to, we want to be serious about it. We want to go catch some dang fish, but the essence of surf fishing, uh, we got to remember it and what attracted me to it in the beginning is, is the relaxation of it. If you just want to go sit on the beach and throw a bait out, you know, there, there, there's two different types of people, you know, they want to sit there and drink beer enjoy some time with the family, throw a rod out. Uh, and that, that's totally okay. You know, don't, don't get too bogged down with this stuff. But if you want to get serious, you definitely want to start focusing on uh, what's going to be more successful. So when you see this hole, when you see this pocket, if you want to go out there and be successful, 
uh, you want to make sure that you have a target in mind. Uh, that, that's when I really started in my journey, surf fishing, it, it being more successful is understanding the species that I wanted to catch. Oh, now, man. I'm so glad you said that. We just did a podcast on that, right? Because when you first start fishing, you know, you go to a pier and you ask the dude, hey, what are you fishing for? Anything mm -hmm. little bite. But yeah. the guy, the guys who like, like I talk about Captain Peter Deeks, who's got like multiple world records. When I go fish with him, he, that's the last thing in the world he would say. He's right. like this first spot, we're only going for trout. This is going to be yeah. trout only. And he's got it literally dialed in with exactly how he's going to position his boat. Yeah, He knows exactly where they are, where they're facing based on their biology. It's, it's night and day. So I'm, I'm so glad you said that. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's the point I wanted to bring up. I mean, for the person that just wants to go and catch anything, you can do that. You know, that's surf fishing in its essence, but there, you can start to drill down on this stuff and start to be more successful and be more serious about it. Uh, when you do start to target species and, you know, we, we could go on for a really long time on the different species and opportunities that you're going to have uh, throughout the year on surf fishing. Um, I don't know how much we want to dive into no, we'll, that. We'll, we'll do that in the course. This will be the <laughs> yeah. general. Yes. Cause this but, is still uh, about, that, that's a very broad, you know, there's a lot. I mean, I, like, oh, my yeah. brain is just popping off right now, the different species and how I target them. And, yeah. you know, so let's, let's stick with, let's trout. stick with the person that just wants to get tight lines and then we'll talk about what bait like what's like the ultimate one or two rigs that you would use but but stick with we found the deeper area because even if i'm sitting there with a beer in hand and a chair i still want to <laughs> have my bait in the in the better area so assume yeah. we found a better area what how do we fish that area and what are we fishing with sure yeah yeah i would um the simplest rig pompano rig you know like it, you can go and buy the if you don't even want to tie it yourself you can go buy it in the store and um what i would look for you know back when i first started surf fishing you didn't have like nice hand tied pompano rigs readily available at the at the tackle shop that now you've got like 30 different brands of uh pompano rigs that you can choose from but you know the main thing just something that's mono or fluorocarbon leader i would avoid you know i see a lot of folks uh that come down on vacation we, we call you know, we call them Walmart rigs or Guggen rigs. You know, that's kind of the, the terminology we use, but it's like, you know, the wire double drop rigs. It's like hundred pound wire uh, with metal everywhere. Uh, you know, and I, I, and look, I used it when I very first started surf fishing, you know, almost 10 years ago, that was the first rig I threw out. So I get it. Uh, but I would avoid that. Or they use the killer bee bait, you know, the stuff that's frozen at Walmart, you know, avoid that stuff. You know, you're going to have a lot more success if you just skip that part. Go to a local tackle store, pick you up some pompano rigs. Uh, they'll be able to guide you there. You know, there's a lot of different color options. It, it's, it's gotten so, so confusing now just from like, okay, there's so many options now. Yeah. Where do I go? Um, you know, as long as you got good leader and something colorful, double drop throw on some synthetic bait, uh, you know, from fish gum, fish bites, get you some fresh dead shrimp. If you can cut up little pieces, put it on the, the hooks there with your synthetic baits, toss it in that deeper water. And you're going to have a really good opportunity at catching some decent fish, you know, if it's the right time of year. Uh, so, I mean, that in the si simplest form, that's what I would do, you know, just pumping a rig, synthetic bait, fresh dead shrimp, and you're, you're rock and roll. So for those that have never heard of a Pompano rig or, or can envision it, can you try to explain what it looks like and, and, and the weight at the bottom, just the whole kit and caboodle of what they should be looking? Because it is. You go into some of these tackle stores near beaches today, and it it is. It's like looking at jig heads. You're like, whoa, yeah. there's all these yeah. different colors and sizes. What do I go with? Yeah. Yeah. Your pompano rig, it's a, a double drop rig or a, a chicken rig. You know, there's different terminology for that as well, but you know, it's going to, it's going to have a, a, a barrel swivel at the top, you know, that you tie it to your main line. So it's real easy to attach. And then it's going to, you know, go down about depending on the rig, it's going to be anywhere from eight to 10 inches. It's going to have its first little dropper rig where the line's coming off of that main main line and you're going to have a float. There's all the different styles of floats, different colors of floats, but some type of float or bead or both may have a float and a bead and then some type of hook. Uh, most of them are tied with circle hooks or kale hooks. You're not going to see a lot of J hooks on, on pompano rigs. 
um, which I wouldn't recommend. You know, I would if if there are some with with the J hook, I, I would kind of stay away from that. I'd go with the kale hook or or, or circle hook if you can. Uh, and it, hopefully you're familiar with that. You know, <laughs> if you're looking at these things, but you can ask questions there. But yeah, I would go that route because the style of fishing you're you're it's called set rig fishing where you're not holding the rod in most cases, you know, you're putting it in a sand spike or you're not necessarily there and you want that fish to set the hook itself, you know, so that kale hook or that circle hook is going to do that for you. And then the double drop rig is going to go down another eight to 10 inches and you're going to have another line coming off that main line with, with the same kind of tackle on it with the float and the hook. And then down at the bottom, uh, depending on the rig, it may have just a loop or it may have like a snap swivel and that's where you're going to attach your weight. And most of the time, I mean, there's different weight options too. Uh, you got Sputniks and spiders and pyramids and uh, storm weights. And, you know, you can go through the whole gamut of, of options there. I, me personally, I've always and only ever used pyramid weights. Uh, where, where we fish in particular, we don't really get super strong currents. We don't get super strong uh, surf in most cases. So like we're using anywhere from one to three ounce pyramid sinkers. Now, depending on location, if you're fishing on the East coast of Florida, you know, you're on, you're on the, you know, Atlantic ocean side, you get a lot more strong, stronger currents and, and a lot rougher surf. A lot of those guys, if they're using pyramid weights, which they don't very often, uh, they'll use up like eight ounces, six or eight ounces, or even the, uh, you know, Sputnik weights is what we call it. It's kind of like a teardrop weight with some, um, like wire pieces coming off of it that kind of anchors itself into the sand and it holds a lot better. Uh, we don't necessarily need all that. They're more expensive. They're, uh, there's just more moving parts to it. If you can get away from that, I would, I would, I would recommend it, but sometimes you need it. So, uh, but that's where you're going to attach your weight is at the bottom of that pompano rig. And uh, I would just look for something if you're in our area you know, one to three ounces, you know, get a few options there because you're going to need that uh, depending on how rough the surf is. You know, if it's super calm, you can get by with a one ounce. But if you've got a little bit of surf, you know, a little, and it's a little windy, a little bit rough, you may have to put the three ounce weight on there. Cool. And, you know, it, we were in Daytona Beach, which is an area that has pretty big surf. And, there, yeah. you know, it's a great place to actually surf. Thankfully, it was, it was pretty low while we were there. And all we had was our normal seven, six, you know, medium rods that we had yeah. from TFO. And we went and tied our own little pompano rigs, found my daughter was picking up little sand fleas and we had a little bit of fish bites and we caught fish. We, we caught pompano and flounder right there using our same exact same rod that we're using for trout and redfish on the flats. And uh, so I think that's a, to me, that was a big misconception that, oh, I got to have all new surf rods and these monster, you know, reels with 4,000 million yards of line. Cause I'm going to, you know, <laughs> yeah. catch some that's going to be spooling me. And, and you don't, <clears throat> there are times, obviously if you're shark fishing or going for big tarpon that you need that, but it, just to get tight lines and get maybe some whiting and some pompano, even some little flounder, depending on where you are, you, you don't need to recreate all your tackle. Uh, you just yeah. need, you know, the, a couple of the right rigs and the right, the right bait. So. Yeah, bass yeah. gear will get you by in, in most scenarios. You know, we, we use for surf fishing, like you as you get more serious and get into it, you're, you're going to see the uh, advantages to having the larger gear. It's not for the fish, but it's for the conditions. You know, most of the fish that you're going to catch in the surf are going to be one to three pounds. Like 90% of the fish you catch are going to be small fish. So light tackle is, is really the way to go. And you can get by with a really light tackle in our area that I fish primarily. Now it is a little bit more uh, difficult to get by on a regular basis on the East coast from my understanding and from my experiences, just because it is a little bit, you know, you will need that heavier gear to throw those heavier leads and, and to stick in that. Um, and even in our area, you know, you need it from time to time. But uh, if you're just coming down on vacation, you're going to be there for a week. You got some bass gear. Uh, you can most definitely fish uh effectively for a few days with with your bass gear uh, and a pompano rig and and catch fishing and, and the other thing too you know obviously with the larger gear big big misconception is you know you want to throw these baits to you know 
Cuba <laughs> from, from the sand. You know, everybody out there, it, it, they're long cast and they're trying to just heave it. You know, they'll wade out there till they're neck deep and just throw it as far as they can, you know, thinking, oh, I got to get out there to catch fish. You, most of these fish, you will be very surprised, are within 10 to 15 yards of the sand. I mean, they are so close. Um, I, I always, doesn't matter what I'm fishing for, I always will have a bait. 10 to 15 yards, at least one, but most of the time that's all I fish. You know, I may have three rigs out and they're all 10 to 15 yards from the sand. They're very close. So, you know, you don't have to cast really far to, to be successful in, in the surf. Most cases, a lot of yeah. those deep pockets that we're talking about, uh, those carve outs, you know, that deep walk. And I, I kind of touched on it, but you want to find that deepest water closest to the beach. You know, that's kind of the caveat there, you know, yeah. because any, anytime you find that deep water close to the beach, I, I, can almost guarantee you if there are fish running anywhere along that stretch that that's where they're going to be that's awesome in, in general because we're going to go in depth on all the different rigs and 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 everything you can possibly imagine about surf fishing regardless of where you are but in general if you're on vacation is i mean is 10 pound braid still enough or are you going up uh tell me what you're using in terms of your your reel and and your line yeah, my, the main line on my light tackle setups, which I, I use what's called steelhead rods. Um, they're used for steelhead fishing and they're kind of lighter action rods, but they still have a lot of length to them. Like they're nine to 10 feet. Mm -hmm. And I use those on my light setups and I use a 2000 size spinning reel. And I, I load those with 10 pound braid. And that's what I, if, if I, if it's flat calm, you know, and it's a calm day, I can use it most days where, where I fish. Uh, that's all I'm going to use. I'm going to take those three set, those three rigs with me and I'm, and I can cast them plenty far enough to where I can get to fish and I'm going to pompano fish. I'm going to whiting fish, you know, I'll, I'll drum fish, all of it with that. Um, so 10 pounds is, is fine. Um, now when you start getting into heavier gear, uh, you know, my bigger surf setups, which again, it's not for the fish, it's for conditions, you know, if it's rougher or if I do need to get baits out deeper you know if pompano are running deep sometimes you do need to cast really far out there mm -hmm. uh, i run 20 to 30 pound braid and again that's not for the fish that's because i'm throwing heavier leads and you know i want them to not snap or whatever i may be throwing three four five ounces uh to get further out and also to to hold in those conditions yep that's good um let's flip it because you know we love talking about lures here I remember growing up, Luke and I, kind of our first experience with, with beach fishing was in Marco Island. And all we had were, they were made Millie's white bucktail jigs. And that's what we were throwing. We were going after snook for the most part. And we were just walking, right? That, to us, that was part of the adventure. It's not, no chairs, just, you know, a little tackle bag and one rod and one reel and praying it didn't get broken off uh, with a little bit extra line. But that was it. And then we'd have Millie's white bucktail jigs and we caught some nice snook what do you use if that was your intention? Maybe you're walking with your spouse and she didn't want to be sitting still and you're just taking a nice walk, but you still want to be making cast. What are you using? Uh, now you're, you're dead. If I'm, if I'm somewhere where there's snook, which we don't have them, unfortunately, where we are, I've done some beach snook fishing. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'd probably either have a bucktail or a slam shady tied on. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I'm going for snook. Um, but, uh, if, if I'm in our area, uh, I, I would tie on something shiny, uh, you know, because everything eats it, uh, you know, whether it be a spoon of some sort or a diamond jig, uh, or, you know, even a pompano jig, um, something like that. If you're walking the beach and you just want to catch fish, uh, anything like that. And, and there's a lot of options there. Um, but yeah, anything shiny, you throw it in the surf, especially late spring throughout the summer in our area, uh, you're going to catch fish, you know, and, and, and that's the thing too, that's really cool about surf fishing. You know, obviously we've talked about all these species that are a little bit more desirable among the people that that, that fish salt water regularly, but there's a lot of species of fish that are really fun to catch that oh, yeah. kind of get ignored, you know, yeah. like from your ladyfish and your blue runners. Uh, you know, I mean, those, those are really fun fish to catch or even bluefish. You know, a lot of times people don't, you know, give bluefish much attention, but they're a really cool fish to catch. And, you know, so you get a lot of opportunities, a lot of different species of fish that is a lot of fun that you can have a really great vacation if you just walk in. and that's all you all you bring like you don't even have to fool with any of the other stuff i mean if you just bring a bass set up and tie on a spoon 
you can have loads of fun for an entire week of fishing. <laughs> and, I, 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 I assume you're going a little bit heavier. Like, you know, we're using a quarter ounce spoon. You're going a little bit heavier for the surf. Uh, or are you not? I, I throw a quarter ounce a lot. Um, oh. you, you, you know, like a Johnson spoon yeah. type deal, you know, a gold or silver spoon. I'll throw that a lot. Now you're going to run into to some issues if, uh, if, if it's windy, um, you know, for rougher surf, uh, you know, if, if you have a rig that can throw an ounce, then, then that's the money. Um, you know, and I would say I, what I like throwing is are diamond jigs, which diamond jigs, yep. uh, they're, they're more linear and the, the weight of it just cuts through the, the way that it's designed. It's not, it's not broad, it's, you know, thin and it just cuts through the wind real, real well. It's great for surf fishing and it's real easy to use. Uh, I would, you know, if you're tying it on your bass rig, definitely use some, some heavier leader because you're gonna run into some toothy critters <laughs> out yep. there from bluefish and Spanish. And even the ladyfish, they have real abrasive mouths. So they'll, they'll pop your leader. You know, anything from 30 up to 50 pound leader, you know, tie that spoon, that diamond jig on one ounce and just throw it as far as you can, walk up and down the beach. You know, don't worry about looking at features or anything, just cover some water. Uh, you, and from time to time, you'll see the fish, you know, they'll be blowing up. And a lot of times, especially early in the mornings, those fish, you, you're almost standing on them. I mean, they, they, they push bait early in the mornings, these late spring and throughout the summer. I mean, literally you'll see dead bait fish all over the beach. You're like, you know, what's this from? And if you didn't get out there early in the morning, you didn't see it, but they're, they're pushing bait onto the beach and they're throwing baits on the beach and, uh, you can just throw your spoon or diamond jig in there and catch fish literally at your feet. Um, you know, so it's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, uh, artificial fishing on the beach is my favorite thing. Like I last year, I put a lot of heavy focus into that. I, I set rig fished a handful of times last year and pretty much anytime I was on the beach, all I was doing was throwing some type of artificial. Uh, I love personally, my favorite thing to do is, is throwing big plugs. You know, I, I love throwing big poppers, yeah. uh, you know, big X wraps, big spoons, because, you know, we get Jack Herbell, uh, we get the redfish that eat that stuff. Uh, you know, you get opportunities of big blue fish. I mean, like that's what gets me jacked is uh, throwing those big, big lures for those big fish on the beach, which, you know, that's something else you can get into too. Oh yeah. We'll definitely be, covering that in the in the full course it's gonna be good um so let's kind of end it with some uh, mistakes to avoid we've talked about a couple what what are some other things that when you're in the beach and you see someone new and you're like oh man i wish i could just tell them this or maybe you do go tell them uh i i can't help myself these days you know <laughs> i have to but yeah you know we touched on two you know and just to to recap on those you know number one avoid the, the bad rigs you know try to try to not get stuff that's too heavy from wire and metal and, and bad bait you know that that's a big mistake get fresh bait you're always going to win uh, if you're using dead baits there with with fresh bait or yep. thinking you got to cast too far um you know a lot of people i see so often you know just trying to bomb baits when they're throwing over so many fish um you know, those are, the, those are the biggest things. And, and even still, it, it's funny to me, uh, I, I run into, you know, where I am and, and with what I do, I run into so many people that, that watch my videos and I get to meet them, which is neat. And, and st even still, you know, they, they're, I walk up and talk to them and they're like, yeah, you know, I love your videos, I watch your videos all the time. And I look at their rigs and I look at where they're casting. I'm like, you must not be paying a lick of attention, you know, like, I, <laughs> this is like nothing like how I fish or what I do, you know, and, and I'll kind of, you know, explain things and maybe I'm just a terrible uh, uh, communicator. I don't know. And, and they're not getting the message, but it's, it's definitely the two biggest things that I see mistakes is people just using the wrong rigs, wrong baits, and uh, also just casting too far, it, which again, fish will be there. You'll catch fish, but you're going to have, so much more fun and so much more success if you if you do start putting your baits closer to the beach that's awesome i think uh i think you're one of the best at it replying to your funny comments on uh, <laughs> <laughs> i get such a kick because i we're friends on facebook and you'll post yeah. some of that stuff personally and i'm like oh my goodness what what are what are what are some good ones that have happened recently and if you don't know what i'm talking about we're talking about the craziness that happens on a platform called YouTube because it's it's unlike Facebook. 
where we have to actually, you know, put a real email address in and have a real picture. And for the most part, YouTube, it's a wild west. So you can have 30,000 accounts if you want to, as long as you right. can create enough email addresses. And uh, you, you have people who are basically anonymous and, and say some of the most outrageous off the wall things because no one knows who they are. Uh, and you, we all have some funny ones. You have some, you, you, you bring light to some pretty, uh, pretty hilarious ones. Uh, yeah, what are some it, good ones recently. It, there's so many. I, I, I can't think the, the, the theme though, that it's really funny that I just, I never knew that this would, would have been as big of a deal as it is, but you know, like I got my long hair, um, <laughs> that so many grown men, uh, are, are really concerned with my physical appearance. I, I just did not realize that that was going to be a hang up for a lot of these guys, like guys that will legit say, you know, I, I can't even watch your channel anymore because of your hair. I, you know, okay, man, I, I don't get it, but that's fine. You know, that's you brother. But I, I the, the things that people say, it just, it, it really blows my mind. Um, and, and, you know, if, if I'm being real honest with you, Joe, I mean, I, there's times I'll watch things that, you know, I may think something, you know, and be like, eh, whatever, but it's nothing I would ever say to anybody. And, yeah. Uh, but when you got a, when you're behind a keyboard, you know, you get real brave and oh, yeah. uh, people like to express their opinions. And, uh, you know, so we, we get the brunt of that, but I, it's just something I, it, it's how I, uh, past the time sometimes you know i just like going through my comments and finding those those really juicy ones you know those those ones that, that really come in after me and, and make some smart aleck uh response i i i i can i, I can get that you know smart aleck uh tendency in, in me sometimes yeah. and so i it, it just comes out <laughs> yeah and you know some of these people are absolute trolls because if they're talking about fish cruelty and all this no uh, one should ever fish like why are you watching a youtuber who is literally does nothing but fish uh because right. we get the same stuff i was like oh yeah. my goodness yeah um yeah luke but luke got the same thing with his hair we still get comments that come in i'm not surprised uh because he's got you know similar hair link to you and and he he just kind of lets it go like he doesn't yeah. use product or anything and it's just kind of out there and in the wind and uh yeah it's funny how many people ask hey when are you getting a haircut and yeah I, it's just for me per like i've never looked i've just never even given a second thought to another man's appearance honestly like i just i did not know that it would matter but you know my wife my wife 100 percent honestly she likes it that's we're all you going. can ask for that's all that's that matters that's yeah. what we're going for. no i think it looks great um I, I used to have longer longer hair and just got tired of dealing with it. i think it helps you catch fish like uh, I, think you're I, right. I think the longer your hair the the bigger and the more fish you catch well to me it gives more credibility <laughs> than look you know because that's what my brother used to be the opposite he looked like a banker he was you know yeah, he yeah. was clean shaven had a short cut and now like he he has caught more fish uh ever yeah, since I mean, he let you, it grow you can't, so. you can't be looking like a banker and out there you know <laughs> crushing fish man i mean <laughs> Yeah, you, you gotta have some something going on. <laughs> All right. Well, where can everyone find you? YouTube channels the number one spot, but I know you're on Instagram and everywhere else. But Bama Beach Bomb. Yeah, yeah. If you go to YouTube, you type in Bama Beach Bomb, it'll it'll pull up my channel, and uh, you can you can find some 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 stupid videos you can find some educational videos you, can, you know whatever we got all kinds of over the last four or five years now it's it's just a comb you know there's just a conglomeration of all kinds of stuff on there but the theme is fishing you know we, we i fish and uh, you'll you'll learn something or at least be entertained at some point i promise <laughs> yeah it'll 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 most likely be both um how often do you put new videos up now What's the goal? Tr my schedule, I try to stick with three videos a week. That's good. Um, it, it's, it's tough, you know, sometimes depending on the uh, ability of me to get content, you know, I may have to back it down to two a week. But uh, most weeks I try to upload like a Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday kind of schedule. That's awesome. Um, so, yeah. Cool, brother. And then on Instagram, same thing. Bama yeah, Beach yeah, Bum. it's um, on Instagram is Bama Beach Bum underscore fishing. I, okay. I couldn't get just the Bama Beach Bum on that. Who, but, who's got uh, that? Some punk? I don't know, man. I don't. I'm not sure. Someone got salt strong. I mean, it's a trademark name, sure. and um, some dude who's got just a few posts has salt strong. We technically could probably take it from him, 
Right. Uh, but we haven't. We see it. Let, let them have it. So we're the salt strong. But it always bugged me that some dude got there first back when yeah. Instagram was in its infancy. Yeah. But, that, you know, it, I, I've run across that a few things. That somebody, it's funny, somebody had Bama Beach Bum on Facebook. Uh, hmm. And, you know, Facebook, I think you can you can both have it. And uh, he ended up closing his account because <laughs> – I, I had posted something about it and uh, like so a lot of my followers went and started commenting and like it, it, it drove him crazy. And he, I was, <laughs> social media, man, like the things you can do, it's, uh, yes. it's pretty wild. The world we live in it uh, is crazy. Days, it, it's pretty funny. <laughs> yes. 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 Well, dude, we're really pumped about this uh, beach course. And um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm actually begging why that I can come. I was like, man, I can, I'll be a video videographer or whatever you need. Come so, on, uh, man. That'll be a fun one. It'll be a fun yeah. one. Well, dude, enjoy the time with the family there in Florida. Going to get some fishing done here. Yep. Head, headed to Okeechobee uh, cool. today. I'll be fishing there the next two days. Awesome. Doing some bass fishing, which is definitely not my thing. I'm not a bass fisherman. Don't claim to be, but you know, I, I got some buddies that are fishing Okeechobee. I, I assume you probably fished it. Oh yeah. Some- you know, you're pretty close. Yeah. Uh, but I, I feel like it's uh, one of those things as any fisherman, if you get that opportunity in your lifetime, you should, should take that opportunity. Oh yeah. And expect you're going with people that know the lake, like a fished it and know. Yeah, oh yeah. Experience. Yeah. Yeah. So. Cause it's, I mean, obviously a pretty big body of water. Otherwise right. you're like, where do I even, where do I even <laughs> launch? Uh, it's, it's massive. So yeah, yeah that'll be blasted. Looking forward to yeah. seeing some footage from that. Yeah. Oh, brother, stay a uh, bummy. I know you will. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I'll beat you to your own, your own line. And uh, yeah, really, really pumped about this beach course. We'll keep all you guys updated when we have, uh, have more, make sure to go follow Bama beach bum there on all the social media platforms. And if you're listening to the podcast, make sure to go to saltstrom.com and the fishing tip section, you'll see in a blog post, we'll put links to everything and you can ask us questions and uh, I'll make sure to forward them over if there's anything specific uh, as long as it has nothing to do with hair or hair products. Uh, uh, I'd be now. happy to answer those questions. Okay, we will be happy to answer those. <laughs> so, hair products are now in play. So, all right, guys. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, brother. And we'll, uh, we'll be seeing you soon. Thanks, Joe. Peace.